uh, welcome everyone and um, this is my lightning talk uh, I would like to um, uh, talk for a brief moment about uh, SVGs uh, some may know them and use them extensively and some of you might have some basic knowledge about them uh, this is why my main goal is to introduce the concept of a CG to all of you and share my experience working with them. Uh, uh, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. Uh, it was first introduced in 1999 by World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, as the name suggests, it is a graphic that is highly scalable and is written in a vector form. Basically, it contains instructions how to construct the image rather than raw bitmap data. In this presentation, I wanted to uh, take you on a quick tour of SVG concept. First, intro uh, introducing what is SVG and what are the key differences between JPEG or PNG images. Secondly, I would like to explain how to write or draw SVG images and how to embed them on the web website. Uh, then I would like to show the SVG uh, animation magic in action with some cool examples. examples. And the very, at the very end, I want to just briefly mention a few libraries that heavily rely on SVG API. Why we actually need those SVGs? Uh, could we, couldn't we just use images uh, either in JPEG or PNG format? Images are the best option if you want to present some complex things, galleries, jumbotrons, um, you name it. It's a, it's a good way to engage user. However, uh, because, as they say, picture is worth more than a thousand words. However, there are some cases that we don't need such level of complexity. Simple shapes like icons, logos, or charts don't need to, uh, don't need to be in JPEG format. That is why SVG is a way better option. They wait uh, close to nothing and can scale almost indefinite without any loss in quality. Uh, one could wonder if SVGs are so great, why couldn't we use it everywhere? Yes, of course, it is possible, as you can see in this uh, picture. Uh, there is a possibility to convert any given image to SVG. However, it has some drawbacks. It is a machine generated, and for complex images, this conversion can be quite heavy. It means that you won't get any significant size reduction. At, this, at the same time, it is a cool feature that might have some usage somewhere. Someone, someone might also ask, but how can I draw it? Do I need some kind of software to do it? My answer is yes and no. If you are a graphic designer, you probably need some software to easily draw and then export it to SVG format for front-end developers to use. If you are developing front-end, then you can easily construct simple icons without any help from the graphic designers. You need to have a hamburger icon or mobile um, uh, or mo mobile uh, for mobile or some ch chevron for uh, drop down or even exit icon. It's quite simple. SVG is written in XML language, so it is similar to writing HTML code. Uh, the most important tag is SVG. It has some key attributes, uh, view box which is our canvas on which we will paint shapes. Uh, it, has, uh, four, uh, it has to have four numbers, which represent origin point x coordinate, um, y, um, origin point y coordinate, max width, and max height. Uh, this is like a coordination system which, in, uh, in which we can navigate and place different uh, elements. It's also worth knowing that uh, Viewbox is like a window. Uh, everything that will be outside of a window will not be displayed. Another important parameter is XMLNS, in which we specify namespace. In short, namespace gives browser information how to interpret given markup. Without this declaration, the browser would try to interpret SVG tags as a plain HTML, which obviously will not work as intended. After properly setting SVG, it is possible to start putting all kinds of shapes and lines to build some image. 
There are some basic elements which you can mix and match, uh, and each of them needs some attributes in order to appear inside the browser. On the right, there is a simple green check mark. In this example, I drew it using polyline element, which needs, uh, on, which needs three points to draw, P1, P2, and P3. Uh, it is possible to add other properties to customize uh, the shape. Here, uh, here you can see the biggest dip, uh, difference between um, CSS properties or styling for um, HTML elements and SVG elements. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to change the border uh, uh, border of SVG, you have to use the stroke. Um, a stroke property. If you wanted to change the background color of SVG, you have to um, you have to use fill. And if you wanted to um, change the width of the border, then you have to use a stroke width property uh, for SVG. Uh, these are only a few examples of SVG specific styling properties. Um, there are several simple shapes that can be drawn. First one is circle. You can draw it by specifying center point and a radius. Using fill attribute, it is possible to paint the inner circle. Next one is ellipse. In this case, it is necessary to specify radius in x direction and y direction. As for rectangle, you need to specify position of top left corner, uh, as well as width and height. In order to draw a straight line, all you need to know is uh, where it starts and where it ends. Uh, that is why you need to specify position of starting point and ending point. Uh, here, uh, I just wanted to show how easy it is to draw a very simple close icon and hamburger icon using uh, only line SVG elements. Polygon is a little bit more complicated than other shapes. Uh, the most important attribute uh, here um, that needs to be specified is points. In a string form, you need to give uh, points, uh, points uh, coordinates. X and Y coordinates are separated with comma and each point with a space. It is a closed shape, so last point will be automatically joined with the first point. Polyline is very similar to polygon. The only difference is uh, that it will remain um, open. Uh, you don't, uh, so it won't be automatically uh, closed, as in polygon. Um, path is the most universal element. At the same time, the most complex. Uh, in order to draw anything using path, you need to specify the attribute as a string. Um, and inside, you you have a bunch of uh, commands like, uh, to, for example, there is a move um, uh, command when you wanted to um, when you wanted to start drawing from from other place. So you have to move a virtual pen uh, to other location in order to to draw uh, to to draw something else. Um, you, and you have a bunch of others like arcs, like uh, lines, horizontal, vertical, um, and many more which are uh, unfortunately too complicated and time consuming to, uh, to, to, to introduce them here. Um, but feel free to, um, uh, to dive in this subject, and, but be careful, it's very deep. Um, yeah, and if you have enough time and patience, you can build something as amazing as this little beauty. Uh, so if you uh, already have a SVG file, then um, how can I use it on a web page? There are a few main methods, and the choice is highly dependent on the context. Uh, the most common is to put it uh, as um, uh, as any other images, so uh, in image tags, specifying file, pa the file path in a source attribute. Uh, this method allows browser to cache the image uh, once loaded. We lose at the same time the ability to customize SVG. 
uh, like changing colors, borders, as well as using scripts to alter all or animate SVG. Second common way is to use SVG directly in CSS. Uh, the most unique method is directly embedding SVG code in HTML. It is possible, it is possible because of their close relationship to each other. Uh, this mod method is uh, very useful, uh, for example, in React code, if we want to add some interaction or construct SVG using scripts. Uh, in this method, uh, because it is directly embedded in HTML, you will not have the separate request. The code will be loaded together with uh, HTML file, so there will be no caching. Uh, the last option, and the least used by me, is object tag. Uh, it is possible to cache SVG, and also it is possible to style it with some minor drawbacks. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it, but it's not uh, all that SVG can do. Each and every element can be customized and animated by, uh, to bring life into those shapes. And those are only a few examples how animation can put life into static images. In this case, you can uh, try to morph shape into different one as with our Visual P logo. Uh, you can also put motion to pipe-like diagrams to simulate flows. Uh, it is uh, poss also possible to enhance user experience uh, into login or registration process for users, uh, for users introducing animated bird. Uh, it peeks at the email input and follows the cursor while the user types and covers his eyes while the user enters password. You can even add a reaction indicating if user filled the form correctly or if they make a mistake uh, in their email address. Or is, uh, as in the, this last example, you can e even simulate viscosity effect of liquids. How about browser support? Is it possible to use SVG in any given browser there is? Support for SVG is uh, very good. And most of the modern browsers don't have any problem displaying them on the web page. Unfortunately, there, there is one browser that, of course, refuses to fit in, and it is uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, in this particular example, there, there, there is problem with, with animations, but any uh, static a graphic uh, should be safe. Overall, SVGs have um, many advantages when compared to standard image formats. I think the most crucial benefits are scalability, weight, and possibility to customize them or even build programmatically. To sum up, if you want to create simple icons, chart, or diagrams with some interactions or animations, uh, SVG is your choice. Uh, so what about the libraries? Uh, the most uh, uh, popular li library that uses SVG, uh, in my view, is D3, which stands for data-driven uh, documents. In short, uh, using some out-of-the-box uh, scripts or methods, it is possible to quickly draw engaging diagrams or charts. The biggest advantage, as well as the disadvantage, is uh, that it gives user great power uh, over what can be drawn. Uh, however, some knowledge about SVG is needed in order to fully use this library. Uh, this library, on the other hand, is um, on the opposite side of the spe spectrum. So. Uh, here, the library um, provides you the React components, uh, which actually renders some neat kawaii-styled uh, images to engage users. By simply uh, changing some properties of a component, you can change how the component will look. You can change its color, size, or mood. Uh, it's also a good example how it is possible to draw SVGs, uh, SVG images um, programmatically. 
yeah. So uh, here, if if anyone can uh, wanted to, to dive a little bit uh, deeper or just wanted to um, to to read through the resources uh, from what I've uh, I've been um, uh, I've been using, uh, here is the list. So feel free to, to just uh, uh, go and search for whatever topic you, 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 you want. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it for this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. 